Hey, what's going on everybody? It's good to see you guys out here again. Today we're going to be taking some film portraits with a couple friends. Nathan's behind the camera and I have my friend Serena. You may have seen her in a couple photos that I've been posting up here and there. I'll try to throw it up right here. But today we're just here in the dog patch with one outfit. And then we're going to go to the beach for a second outfit. I'll save all my comments up until the end. So enjoy this video and let's get going. You're gonna cut the audio out, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that audio is not gonna be included, but if you say something funny in there, I'll include it. <laughs> oh my god, it's so hot. I'm like starting to sweat. Speed that up in post. That was so slow. Hold, 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 hold. Look right at me. 
What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the studio. I'm just hopping on right now to share my thoughts about the shoot. So this was my first time shooting with Serena on film, medium format film, uh, let alone. And it was a really fun time. I usually shoot like digitally with her whenever I want to like come up with some kind of portfolio piece or some kind of like creative concept as you have probably seen in like other examples like popping in here and there and there and there and there. And there. One of the most obvious differences that you can probably guess between digital and film was the amount of photos that I actually took for digital. I can yield like about like 130 photos out of like maybe 250 or 300 shots like yielding around like 50%. But for film, I only shot 26 frames, two and a half rolls, and it was like pretty crazy how I got 24 good shots out of it. So with that, that's like 92% success rate, which is super high. It feels really good, but during the shoot, or, or rather at the end of the shoot, when I realized that I only shot 26 shots, I'm like, oh my gosh, did I produce anything? <laughs> It was really weird at first, but when I got the scans back and I reviewed it and I like tweaked the photos just a little bit here and there, I was very pleased with the results. Each frame was definitely like meticulously designed. I had like 75% of those photo ideas coming into the shoot and the other 25% was like improvised. So it was really nice to have a 92% success rate. What I did notice though that was a little strange was uh, the properties of Fuji and Portrait. The highlights were completely blown out in some of the photos. I had to recover some of them. The best that I could, they're JPEGs. You can't really like have that much flex flexibility uh, with editing them as opposed to like raw photos on digital but the highlights should have been retained nice and well because Portra and Fuji have such high dynamic range such high exposure latitude that when I got them back I was like what the like even though I overexposed one stop it should have been completely fine so maybe that's just like something that I need to communicate with my lab if you guys ever take portraits on film like make sure that you like contact your lab because like from shooting it to getting the scans back, there's like so much variability. It depends on like who's developing it and who's scanning it and like who's like behind the computer, the lab technician doing all the color correction and all the minor like editing, I guess. So make sure you communicate that with your lab. My lab is out in Oakland, California. They're called Underdog Film. I really love them. They have given me such great results in the past. Here and there, like I would see like, yeah, those highlights blown out, like in some of the portrait shots. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen that in another portrait video with Nathan when I was in LA. So that was kind of, that's kind of been like a common like problem. And I guess I should start communicating, you know, go easy on the highlights. The next thing that I want to talk about was my choice of film stock. So as you saw, I started off with portrait 400 and I overexposed the one stop to kind of retain some details in the shadow. I went with portrait first because I knew that it was going to be like more like high sunlight and it would be like less saturated compared to golden hour so portrait 400 would give me that nice warmth in the skin tone that uh serena has i was a little bit afraid because she doesn't have like super pale skin so sometimes like from what i've observed at least maybe again it could be the lab technician but if like the person already has some warmth in their skin tone and i like shoot with portrait it kind of like ugh, over emphasizes that warmth so I would always have to dial it back and post. So I was a little bit nervous going into that, but I was kind of counting on the sun kind of desaturating the skin a little bit and portrait resaturating again. So like it becomes a nice balance. And it turned out very good. In golden hour, when we were at Ocean Beach, I switched over to Fuji Pro 400H because you know, Fuji Pro 400H has a very nice neutral palette. Combine that with the goldenness of golden hour, I feel like that would be like a nice balance of, uh, you know, color. Oh, wow, that was, Poorly phrased. <laughs> 
but you get what I mean. You can shoot in Portrait 400 or Portrait 800, like whatever stock that you want in Golden Hour. I just prefer the more like neutral uh, tone of Fuji Pro 400H so that I could get like a more true to life and like mm, softer look and it turned out perfect. I love those beach photos. They were my absolute favorite. And I guess the last thought that I can talk about is like outfits and the location. So the first outfit was actually supposed to be a very like pop color, warm tone stuff because you guys know how I do. I love like colorful outfits and colorful backdrops and all that jazz. But Serena didn't really have those outfit pieces that uh, I originally planned for, which is totally fine. So we went with a more like powerful, like business, casual street combination and it worked out very well and we went to the dog patch neighborhood of san francisco because there's a lot of nice like metallic slate warehouse areas that would go well with that color palette so when you're doing like fashion portraits or any kind of portraits i guess location really does matter in accentuating the outfit that your subject wears so the beach is a very easy touchdown play if you go for a more like white more cream colored uh, flowy outfits is just too easy and combine that with golden hour and i guess for myself fuji pro 400h it just was a win-win situation there was no way of losing uh, for that i only shot one roll all 10 shots came out perfectly fine so hey if you ever shoot like beach photos going with that kind of outfit is perfect but show me guys like what you guys can create tag me at who's chris chu if you guys ever do uh film portraits and you post them up on your instagram and yeah that's all of my thoughts about this shoot it was really fun doing this i kind of want to do this more it was just nice to shoot less photos and have a higher uh yield success rate i guess i mean like 92 percent. that's like super cool i shot 26 shots got 24 good ones the other two were just like pfft like they were pretty bad so i mean i will continue to do this will i lean more into uh film portraits for professional work that would be nice uh, i need to do like more portfolio pieces to kind of like you know develop my own skills first before showing people that i can do that but it's a very nice experience you know with a top down mirror and like shooting with friends is like very like low pressure and I don't know, the experience is like very, very pleasant. And that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and leave a comment down below about what your thoughts about this video was. And I will see you guys and girls in the next video. Peace.